Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Champion Slot Machine. I'm your host, Fizzledrix, and with me, as always, is my Twitch community and my brother, Bacchano Reese, in the head, the voice in my head. And today, we're going to do what we always do in this series, and we are going to roll our slot machine. It's going to give us two regions and two champions, and we're going to use that to build a deck in Legends of Runeterra. But because the new champions just came out, we are making sure that we build at least one deck with each one of the new champions. We've already built one with uh, Nar and Galio. Technically, the Galio one also had a Yumi in it. But Yumi is still on the table, and so is Udir. And so one of these will guarantee to be one of those two champions who we're going to play with them. I don't know. That's kind of the fun. So if you enjoy what we do on here, building decks and having fun, please hit the like button. Really appreciate it. The channel's still very new. Every like goes a long way. Uh, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I uh, And if you want to be a part of the deck building process, you can catch me on Twitch from 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, until about 3 and I do it most days, except for basically Saturday night. So, uh, without further ado, let's see what champions we're playing today. Oh, well, we know it's who, dear. Spirits of the land, hear my call! The future is steel and science. Fascinating. Today, we're going to play Udir and Victor. The reason I say these two are fascinating is because Victor cares about created card and Udir cares about stance swap, which is a created card. Stance swaps can give overwhelm to Victor, who could really use that keyword. So this actually could be a pretty decent combination. Yeah, create synergy. Victor, yeah, exactly. Is... You can Coping. try to slap or generate on Victor early regenerate could be decent on victor early yeah because the plus two plus oh plus two and make sure that your x deck core upgrade doesn't have to choose regenerate anymore could be useful i'm uh, i'm i'm intrigued so let's go ahead and move over to legends of Runeterra. read the champions and what they do talk about the different strategies we can build with them and then test the deck on ladder all right, now that we're in Legends of Runeterra, let's go ahead and read our champions and see what they do. First, we have Victor. He's from Piltover and Zon. He's a four mana, two, three. Stats aren't great, but he has the augment keyword, which means for every created card, he gets plus one, plus one. Whenever he sees you play a created card, he gets plus one, plus one. And he says, when I'm summoned or round start, create a hex core upgrade in hand. And hex core upgrade is a one mana fleeting slow spell that grants victor a random keyword and it's important to know that if the victor who created this dies and a new victor is played it doesn't work on the new victor which is kind of sad but anyway uh he levels up when you've played seven plus created cards which of course he helps you do by creating one every round and you have other ways of doing it and his leveled up form is uh basically the same he gets plus one plus one like most champions but now created cards cost one less which can be quite useful and then so uh, his champion spell is a one mana fast speed spell that deals one to a unit and creates a death ray MK2 in the top three cards of your deck. Mark two does two mana for two damage and Mark three is three mana for three damage. And they kind of do that. This card is almost detrimental to cast because it literally makes your draws only these burns for the next few turns. That makes this card one of the worst champion spells in the game because you almost never want to play it and ruin your next two or three draws or four draws or whatever by having to get these cards so uh it's a rough spell we're definitely not putting any of it main board and it's probably hopefully something we never have to cast um and then uh we have udir who is a five mana four four from freljord and says when i'm summoned or strike he creates a stance swap in hand, or if you have one, reduced its cost to zero. And stance swap is a three mana slow that allows you to choose one of three different stances. The stances are bear stance, plus two, plus two. Uh, wild claw stance, plus two, plus oh, and overwhelm. Uh, boar stance, plus oh, plus two, and regeneration. And ram stance, deal one to everything but the unit you put it on. It's a pretty good uh, card, not just for using the ram stamps to sweep boards, but also keeping allies with generate alive with regenerate, buffing their overwhelm power, I mean, giving them overwhelm so they can defeat the nexus through blockers. It's just there's a lot of value to the different stances, although they're quite expensive. Three mana slow speed is very difficult to make happen, and they're pretty much best used when they are uh, free. 
when uh, Udyr has made them free. And then his level up condition is you've damaged the enemy next seven plus times this game, which is not difficult to do, and it counts each separate source of damage. You don't have to do it uh, all in seven different rounds or anything like that, like Sejuani or Gangplank, so he's not hard to level up. Um, and when he does, he gets, a, he once again does the same thing, but he also has plus one, plus one for each stance you've cast this game, which can make him, you know, a bigger boy. And hopefully you've already given him overwhelm and you can use that to get in there. Udir is a uh, pretty, a lot of people like to cut down on Udir, but the truth is, I don't think he's that bad. I think the stance swap mechanic is very good. And if you could put enough effort into keeping Udir alive, he can generate you some serious value. Is he as powerful as Nar? No, Nar's nuts, but... He's still, he's better than people are giving him credit for. I feel like Udir is the worst of the four new champs. Nar, Galio, Yumi, Udir. Nah, I mean, that is probably arguably true. Like, I mean, I don't know what I would do. I don't know about Galio and Yumi. They're, Galio's very, he doesn't seem all that great, but I've played, like the deck we played with him yesterday, he puts work in, dude. Like, he does. So he might be better than Yumi. Yumi decks there's it's hard to go all in on a one unit like the fior deck might be the right way to do that but yumi's going to be very limited in play and udir people just haven't found the right uh deck to make udir competitive or the four four stat line is just a little low i think he could be a four five no, i think udir's found his place with the udir swain deck it's, it's been pretty it's been pretty it's effective it's been climbing up yeah in its win rates so uh his uh Champion spell is uh, Spirits Unleashed. It's uh, I give alliers plus one, plus one, and then deal one to everything. So it really only gives your allies plus one, plus oh, but also deals one to everything, which is pretty dang useful. And that's Udir in a nutshell. He's not very oppressive, but his stance swaps could be useful, especially since they are created cards, which Victor actually likes. So we have a minor amount of synergy. So let's go ahead and talk about what strategies we should build with these two units. And first thing we should think about is how to really level them and get them going and get value out of them. So let's go ahead and look at cards that we really should be checking out, like this Volpine Wanderer. It's two mana, two, two. When it's summoned, it creates a stance swap in hand. I think this card is good enough to be played in non-Udir decks and is essential in every Udir deck. Because if you play him before Udir, then you get a stand swap that's free. And that can really make it worth playing Udir. Another option, yeah, bot. Yeah, if we're playing Victor, we're probably playing Ballistic Bot. It's also pretty good. Um, Ballistic Bot is a two mana one three with augment and has round start, create an ignition in hand, which is a fleeting one mana spell at slow speed that deals one to the enemy nexus. This is pretty useful because it can help trigger, keep continuously triggering for an Udir level up. It creates created cards for the Victor level up. We could also consider putting in um, some tra other transform cards that care about dealing damage to the nexus if we want to. Uh, and I think Ballistic Bot just gets too much value to not put into the deck. So these are the two two drops that go well with these two champions. Uh, as for right. where we go after that is kind of up in the air. All right, so we're playing a created cards deck. Let's just... So I was slightly more serious about the iterative improvement than I was with the, about the used cast salesman. What are we hitting your iterative improvement with? I guess Volpine Wonder. Anything? Your opponent's cards? Your cards? That's true. I mean, it does just create a created card. Ooh, Three Sisters. Three Sisters creates a created card and it's just a fantastic combat trick. It allows you to play a Flash Freeze if you're in North or in Tomb. Each of these spells All can right. be pretty good in a minute of different ways. So. Now, here's a spicy, here's a spicy idea. Hard, but I think I failed. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's thought of this. No. Iceborne Legacy on Daring Pora. Nah, that's not very good. What, you want us? So we're we're over here playing fun and building fun things in Champion Slot Machine, and you want us to build the most basic deck like ever in Poro Cannon, Iceborne Legacy. Have you no creativity? Um, I like Three Sisters a lot, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in two copies of that. We don't really have a lot of ways of getting uh fallen felines hexite crystal it's a created card but 
We would basically have to put in Time Trick, and that would be our only option. Iceborne Legacy, Ruinous Acolyte. <laughs> hey, man, I made a fun Ruinous Acolyte deck that used the um, that used the uh, the Shirima's free landmark to give you a free landmark to kill. It's a mono Shirima deck, and he just kills it. So let's look at all these created cards. Which of these created cards do we actually want to play? We could go Yetis. Yetis like to create cards, right? I guess we could also play the uh, Shaman card, right? Shaman's Call, because it creates two fleeting stand swaps. These are two created cards. Both of them could be useful. How about Shaman's Call? I was, hey, we're on the same page, man. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw it in. Just, you know, just have fun with it. Aurora Porealis. We're not playing Poros, Reese. All right, I'm just, I'm just letting you know that right now. We're not playing Poros, all right? We're obsessed with Poros. It's not healthy. Uh, but there's so many created cards. I know. There's like Lonely Poro and Poro Cannon. We don't really have much of a deck here. What is our win condition in this deck? There's the Overwhelm damage Aaron through Stance Poro Swaps. And the... No, I'm just kidding. Overwhelm through Stance Swaps. Assembly Bot with Overwhelm. Back Alley Barkeep. We just keep playing him. Uh, uh, I don't really see much else here that I'm really liking, to be honest. Yeti, Yearling makes Yetis. Those are created cards. So does the Trapper, technically. I think I do like the idea. The drop for, Yeti is also a created card when you drop the first time it creates copies of itself. Yeah, he just keeps creating copies. So we can make it a Yeti deck. Yeah, we can make it Yetis because a lot of the Yeti cards are created. I think the Yetis are also great with Overwhelm and Regenerate. That's true. Oh. We haven't really done a Yeti slot machine deck. Um, so Yeti Yearling, one mana to zero, one, two, last breath, create two Enrage Yetis in your deck. And Enrage Yeti is a one mana five, five, and is a created card. So it would be zero mana with a leveled up Victor and also helps buff up Victor and Ballistic Bot, whatever. Elnux, uh, yeah, we could also go the Elnux route. I don't think Elnux are as good, but maybe they're all right. Troop of... See, the thing is, this is all about Troop of Elnux, right? That, that is what this becomes. And your goal is to try and use Troop of Elnux to swarm out the board. But the wow, thing is, those so even when it creates yeah. Elnux, when you play Troop of Elnux and it summons units, that is technically not you playing created yeah. cards. So it actually doesn't help. Oh. What's Troop of Elnux? Oh, well... If you don't know what Troop of Elnux is, this is the whole point of playing Elnux. Troop of Elnux <laughs> is a 5-mana 3-3, three, three, which stats are horrible, but says for the top 6 cards in your deck, summon each Elnux and shuffle the rest into your deck. So if you use the, the cheap Elnux, the 3-mana one, he creates he creates Elnux in your deck, Volunteer Elnux. It creates Elnux in the top 6, and then you can use that card to pull out him, Volunteer Elnux, or the other Elnux that's in the in the game. The problem is though that the troop of Elnux, when he play when he gets all those free Elnux, it doesn't do it. Troop of Elnux dominate the meta in the past, yeah, but that was when he looked ten deep, and that was before Volunteer Elnux even existed. We well, you could build a deck around that now, but once again, they don't have, they don't count as played created cards for Victor. Every time you drop troop and he pulls them out, they're not actually created cards. It's not playing a created card. Technically, it's the same with the big Yeti guy, right? But well, I think I'm okay with it because all the awesome. one mana five five yetis are all created cards. Uh, we could go yetis, but like I said, and whenever we play the one drop, fine. But this eight drop, every time he summons himself, sure he makes a created copy of himself in deck. But when you get that created copy, you're not gonna play it because it's gonna be just dropped summoned immediately. Yeah. So as far as win conditions go, we can go with yetis. We could go with just like. The, some of these transform units like Mammoth Shaman and uh, the five drop, although I recently built a deck with those guys, so I'm not like super excited to do it again. But uh, we could also do... Uh, it's University Piltover Howling Abyss, all right? Just just run that and I, make the deck. Um, it was already a random deck, you know? Is it Glorious Evolution? I'm gonna put in one Glorious Evolution. Screw it, I like it. It makes me feel happy. Uh, all right, let's just do Yetis. I haven't really come up with anything else that's like concrete or solid with these two. They like created cards, but there's not like, there's not enough in these two colors that make enough created cards. 
Like, it's not like we're Targon or something like that. So let's go ahead and try the Yetis. Avros and Trapper, three man, three, three, when you summon, arrange Yeti in the top three cards of your deck. We've already done, gone over what he does. Big Yeti at eight mana. And the only Yeti that's debatable that we should discuss is Ancient Yeti. Here's my hot take. Give it all. Give it all? Eight mana slow, grow allies health, health and power to the highest health and power among allies. And then grant all allies all allied keywords. We say we get the regen and the overwhelm out, maybe even a little bit more with Victor, and then we just give it all. I don't know how I feel about that. I think I like Ancient Yeti, but it doesn't make a created card, so maybe it's not even worth it, to be honest. I think we want to focus on the created cards. Then. So there are any other units at the cheap end that create cards? Oh, and then there's the Yeti spell. I forgot about the spell. Actually, that makes an enraged Yeti. And you can do great electro rig. Great electro rig? Hell yeah. That guy makes more Yeti makers. I don't like this idea. <laughs> wind condition? Yeah, so our wind condition is overwhelmed through stance swap. Glorious evolution can give us some wind condition. I also, do we want to run Wrath of the Freljord? Big eight mana body. It can get our, it can allow our ballistic bots and our, um, our uh, victor to get through and stuff like that could be a i solid feel like a one of give it all is would be pretty good fine i'll put in one really just good. for you just for you reese i'll put in one because because i love you and it's your your son's birthday so there you go that's my that's my gift for your son's birthday <laughs> <laughs> i'm a cheap <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> hey, you've playing. seen that buried in ice work that's not i've seen it work that doesn't mean i want to play it um i'm putting in troll champ because well because it's troll champ. it's two mana two health two God. minus two power to an enemy it's just nuts i'm hey, not sure Mr. astral Chuck. wolf raiding us with five how's it going my friend thank you so much for the raid i appreciate it how are you doing today uh i am uh playing victor and udir here with my bro and all that sup fizz yeah what's up man good to see you right now we're doing champion slot machine we got victor and udir so we're building a victor udir deck and trying to make it work we're just a few cards short but it's a it has a few synergies in it we'll see if we can really exploit those were you saying Mystic Shot, Reese? I was actually saying I'm not sure I see much of a reason for Mystic Shot. About to hop off for the night, but wanted to move the viewers along, and I appreciate that, man. I need to hop back on some lore. Yeah, the new expansion's been pretty fun. Been off for a few weeks. You know, the Bandle City's a little bit oppressive. It is still the Bandle City exp expansion, after all. But uh, it's still it's still fun. There's a lot of different decks out there. The new champions offer some new uh, some new ways to play the game. So, yeah, you know, and when a new set comes out, is always the best to play a card game anyway. But I thank you so much for dropping off the followers on your way out the door, my friend. Or the viewers, my apologies. Uh, and maybe we just play Avaros and Sentry. Just draw another card or maybe omen hawk or maybe we can play forge chief so here's the thing what do we want as a win con do we want something like pack mentality do we want the eight drop to really break through do we want to rely on glorious evolution to do the trick i'm not like sold on any of these i've been considering trying to play this card right here this uh wrath of the freljord and maybe this is the deck to finally do it but that would be a lot of eight drops, right? I kind of want to run two of them. I don't think I need I think I want something to draw cards. Are we using progress day? And this is an expensive deck. Doesn't have a lot of ways to remove units. I, I think probably have a roost centuries. I'm where we don't really have a way to lock to hold slow our opponents down and lock down the board. No, that's true. Maybe uh maybe you want to run some three sisters. I already run two. Um, maybe some thermogenic beams. I think these might be worth it. Try and finish it off. So I think this is what we're going to start with. 
Um, but basically the point of the deck is that we're going to use our ballistic bots and our victors to gain value and augment and buff them up. We'll also use Yeti Yearling and the whole Yeti package to force out some Yetis. And then we will end the game and finish by using Udir's stance swaps to give things overwhelm. And uh, maybe even a Glorious Evolution or a Wrath Prelior to give it all. One of these three cards will help us push the end. Plus, of course, Abominable Guardian. And that is the concept. We will see how successful this is. And if, uh, you know, any viewers or anybody wants to try a different direction with this deck, I'm totally all ears. But this is what I'm going to go with for now. So let's go ahead and put this on ladder and see how well it does. Ooh, Thresh Galio, huh? That's a fun way to take that concept. I, I have not played against this deck. That's cool. Um, Guardian seems good. So does Iterative Improvement if I can get a Yeti, so I actually kind of want to keep it. Uh, two Ballistic is a bit rough. Especially if his deck is fast. Flesh was weak, but look, look at me now! Flesh was weak, but look at me now! They forgot that you do not. Uh, guess gonna troll chat to keep this dude alive? Guess it doesn't get much more value, so what's the point? You can have him. We're not getting the plus value in that situation, so I don't see the point. I could use Yeti. Guess we'll just create a Union Rage Yeti on top of our deck since we literally have nothing else to play. Engage. I mean, he's gonna do some damage to me, y'all. I just want you to know that right now. That's about to happen. I'm about to get hurt. Now I can do this to reduce that damage by quite a bit. Never mind. I'm not about to get hurt. We're upgrading systems, y'all. We're getting there. Hmm. Fascinating. Oh, you know what? I probably shouldn't have played that because I could have then made the enraged Yeti and gotten this abominable guardian out of turn earlier. That was my mistake. I, that ping to the Nexus was not as good as getting an abominable guardian out of turn earlier. System upgrade. Do that. Ping. I'll just end the round. This is kind of fun. I'm just going to enter improvement this abominable guardian. Okay. Interesting you didn't attack with her, I guess. Yeah, the 6-6 six, six just eats her. Spirits of the land, hear my call! Do I even care? That's my question here. I don't think I actually care. Do I? I do? Okay. I think you care. 
Freeze gets you Flash at zero cost. Back. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it does make the stance zero cost. It's probably worth it. You're right. It also stops him from healing four, obviously. Keeps my deer alive. There's plenty of value. For four mana, that gets a lot of value. The stance swap especially. Now my question is, who do we put this on? Put this on Udyr so he's like an actual unit? Oh no, we do this. I was gonna say, why don't you ram stance? We ram these mother fudgers. There's so much death that happens if you ram stance. Yeah. And he doesn't have any death triggers on board. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can play another Guardian, but whatever. You definitely, you probably want an iterative improvement that the, your big Yeti, right? Yeah, but I'm going to swing out first. I really don't care who he blocks. You can block him, that's fine. I'm going to iterative improvement him. Interesting thing about him too is even if I have to play him for eight mana, he draws a Yeti. Life alert. Thanks, man. Thanks for giving me that follow, dude. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. That helps me out so much. It helps me get closer and closer to my goal, my Twitch goals. Closer and closer every day. Um, I think I let this go. I mean, uh, what do I? What am I gonna do to stop it? Um, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. Well, you have a good night, Life Alert. I'll see you again sometime. Oh, it's so now you want to give all your yetis? Do I want to give all my yetis what? Overwhelm. Yes, we can do all that next turn though, right? Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, we'll have enough. Because I want to put this on one of them. I guess I can put him on him now. No, he'll pull in whoever you put it on now. He doesn't have Challenger. I mean, he doesn't have the attack token. He will on his attack? Sure. But he probably plays something because Cythria dies. The other guy still has Challenger. Yeah. All right, fine. Whatever. We're going to keep this like this. Yay, another one. Pass. Yeah, that was my concern. Just gonna do it again. Now we pass. Follow my lead. I'll clear the way. Yeah, that happens. Chances of this actually working? Pretty low. <laughs> you, you want to play the two drop? I don't want to give him too many more actions, to be honest. <laughs> so he blocks three of them. This guy gets four damage in. Our eyes lead to hidden paths. Block, block, block. Deals four, five, six. It's not enough. I guess I should have played him first. Damn. Yeah. I mean, you get this just to What's up? You knew he had the Sithria. Yeah. Alright, well. Let's go. Mm. Unfortunately. 
Made a little mistake there. Should have played the wolf first. Of course, he doubles the spider's health, so the spider blocks more damage. And she herself is just blocks all damage that she would take, so. Unfortunately, that, call, that, that got the better of us. Let's see if we can do better this time. Well, this hand's a hell of a start, huh? Oh my god. Yeti madness! I guess I should have played both. Yeti! Turn three! I know you got a fair to play. I know you got a fair to play. I know you got a fair. You know you got a fair to play. Is it Loping Telescope or is it Quick Quill maybe on the Gleaming Lantern? I don't know if you play Quick Quill. Maybe you do because you play Gleaming Lantern. I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. Call him. <laughs> he doesn't actually play it on the unit. Though. That's fascinating. We can't stop this from going off. We're just gonna go Yeti Madness. I thought this was an Udir and uh, Victor deck. Sometimes the Yetis just kind of take over. <laughs> I mean, they are created cards. There is technically some synergy with our champions, but maybe they're just more powerful than our champions in this deck. I. I don't know why I like it so much. Wonder face, Come at me, bro. I don't care. Okay. I don't think that's a good attack by him, but all right. Patience. Patience. Scrap peep. What do you discard? No one tell me until he. Makes a selection. I'm surprised you didn't just play a Yeti so you get the heat drop on for next turn. I want to get these as early as possible. These one one mana Yetis. I'm through waiting. Really? What? This dude just discarded an obelisk of power in order to play a three mana two two that immediately died. I don't know what. That is such a weird thing to do. The trap is set. Hey, now we got a bunch of Yetis in the deck. Hopefully we'll find one. We got Pokey Stick by 3-1. Or Pokey Stick my face, more than likely. You got a solution to that problem, my friend? Hmm, hero? Do you have the answer, hero? I have mastered the rain, lightning, and cloud styles. Pass. Go ahead, put your mark on someone. I don't give a willy. If he pokey sticks my face, then I attack. If not, we just get our free guardian out. Boom. 
Guess I'm playing Udir here. Make my stance cheaper. Is there... There's not a good ram stance here. He just made my ram stance much better. Is ram stance even where I want to go, though? I don't think it is, because it would kill my own unit unless I chose it, but then he could pokey stick it and blank my attack, my thing, so. I can just pass here. I'm fine with this going to spell mana. I guess I'm just going to swing out here. Let's see what he does in response. Sure. We'll kill off the Nar. Seems good to me. Wait, does he get another... I don't get another stance if I already have one at zero? Oh, this was a much worse attack than I thought then. Damn. Sure. This whole board dies, though. Whatever. You want to flat free the Nar? Yeah, I could do that. Stop him from making his pokey stick cheaper, I guess. Keep my deer alive. And keep your champion and destroy his. This seems like just seems good. Awesome. Seems like he's losing two of his champions, and I'm not losing my one champion. All right. He still got a lot of cards though. Oh, and now we're on a freaking clock. I guess I give Overwhelm to someone. I would say save that for Ram Stance. Well, you're going to get another one. Um, the Ram fights for none. Yeah, this needs to be played. Yeah. I'm just going to put it on this guy. Actually, I'll put it on this guy. That way he can't just like ravenous block in response. Regenerate on something and hope for overwhelm? Or for hope for give it all? I'm just no, kidding. No, no, I still can't put this on regenerate on any of these guys because he might have a ravenous flock. I'm gonna wait. I don't need to use this right now. Oh, it won't let me cancel it. Okay, cool. It did let me cancel it. Alright. I don't need that. Ooh. Fun. I could lose one of my units right now. Man. <laughs> we don't have enough overwhelm damage. He's just gonna go wide very easily. Let's go! Grab my hat! Comb my mustache! Well it depends. Like he's gonna play he's gonna play minions and you're gonna wanna You might wanna ram stance if he plays multiple one drops. Or one top or one minions, yeah. You can go with the overbomb now. No. Yeah. It's eight of eight of and that's not good. It means we have to win on our next attack, which there's no way we do, so like we should have much already lost. It's freaking vandal tree, man. I mean if you get give it all. You might as well just play give plus two plus two to the seven five because you give, give it all. See, no, because like giving, no, no, giving we here a whole lot. Yeah, 
how many he has with block. Or he's just preparing for a block or a um, scorched earth. I guess we should just put the freaking. Should put the blast. Landmark yeah, the landmark removal in there. He's gonna cost you. Mustache ready. Alright, you got that bottle there. Oh no! Hi! So he's Targon. Maybe it gave him the same region twice and I get lucky here. <laughs> but I doubt it. It begins this new era of technology. Sure. And it was gonna get that to go. So we don't have the uh, no, he's gonna get a next turn though, so I do have one attack, but it's not gonna be enough. I mean, you have a lethal on board if he doesn't kill anything. Well, Chan might make it hard for him to do that. We <laughs> won! Wow! I'm literally shocked. Let's see if that's possible. We have the ballistic bot, so maybe. Oh, man. God, I hate You should decks. really fix your deck tracker. Oh, I can actually just. It's not broken, I just keep forgetting to tap, uh, to launch it. Maybe Victor here. I think Ballistic Bot just kids killed by Fiora, right? Uh, I don't know. This might be a bad move, but we're gonna try it. Maybe he just doesn't draw Fiora? I know that's like a unlikely, especially since he just predicted and chose so quickly. I have a Fiora. Yeah, well then. We can move towards a new deer level up pretty quickly. Turns out, if you don't drop Fiora, Fiora decks are pretty bad. I need to change a few things here. This Shaman's Call isn't doing dick for me. It was Glorious Revol Evolution. Put one of each of those just to actually like draw one. Have a shot. And because I don't want to see Bandle City and because it's not bad against Fiora, I'm going to put two of those in. Try a little bit of a change there and see if we can get something better out of this. See if our changes make a difference. I sure hope so. Want any of this? 
this, right? No. I mean, I guess the aftershock or thermal beam could have been all right, but we don't have really a hand yet. There we go. Oh, it's concurrent timelines. Ralyord PNZ. People wanted to play with Nakuta. Bandle City. Won't we keep? Keep and I will scout ahead. Won't we keep? I like it. Urchin becomes a stinky one. Right. Fine with me. Free damage, yay! Oh no, he's gonna discard my abominable guardian. God damn it! That sucks so bad. Oh my god, I got another one. That's so random. Fortunately, we'll make more. I mean, he might mystic shot right here. Get rid of my only Yeti so I don't make a Yeti. And then I'll have to draw it off the top of my deck. That's fine. We'll be alright. As long as he doesn't play another one of the aloof travelers. And that happens. What did we catch? What did we catch? Oh uh, yeah, should have realized Nar would level up. That was silly of me. Should have blocked. Well. We got a lot of five fives coming in, so see what he does. Get in there! Wouldn't the three one have been? Oh, I guess he didn't even. He can't choose a three one, duh. So he must have gotten some pretty bad uh, units with attack. Like play that. This won't kill him. Let me just do this. We're gonna get some serious value out of the regeneration here. He had five seven. Regenerate. Oh man, this is pretty good for next turn. We could use three sisters this turn to slow him down. I mean, I guess he doesn't matter that much because all of his units have more than that power. Okay. Oh, he doesn't even attack with Nar. Nice. I can force someone to not block. I guess it'll be Trundle. Now. Nice. 
Oh no, I can't because I can't. I don't have enough mana for flash boost. Jesus, silly me. Wait, what? He got a dread way? He just kills all my units now. Are you kidding me? Magic stops with me. Stop them from fleeing. Oh, I should have attacked with that first. You got a problem? Ugh. No sympathy for sorcery. Another troll chair. There goes the three. Let's see if we can survive his attack and counter kill him. We'll see. You. We have a flash freeze for his trundle, which is what I think he's trying to like get out. <laughs> Give it all. That's really bad. I also have Prowly Orc, my friend. I can do it too. Sure, poke me, I don't care. Give me one other unit so I can give it all. Hopefully it's cheap enough. Whatever, nope. I'm going in. Okay. Can he heal? I don't think he can heal, I think we got this. Look at that aftershock hidden value. That's crazy. Aftershock, get it down, you baby! Nice! Woo! The super aggro deck, of course. Of course. Any Yeti would be good here. Nice. Oh, this is a Bandle City. This is a... We want our Aftershocks. That's what we want. It's a Bandle Tree deck. I think it's more important to get the Trapper down and get the Yeti coming instead of playing the Ignition to the deer level up. He might fervor just to kill this thing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if he passes me all this mana, I'm just gonna burn it. Yeah. Ain't no way I attack or use my ignition and he's just gonna burn all that mana. No way. What you got, Norman? Oh, 
Monkey stick, I presume. Pokey stick my trapper. I don't really care. <laughs> it's fine, guys. They walked around. Ah! Too much value generation. These colors mean. Or in Vandal City alone. Dear, not really at all. Forever or something? Kill this guy. Okay. Let's just get murdered. Getting the abominable guardian, yeah. I don't have any. Do not see any. Oh, well, now I do actually. It's a shame. But he's already dead. It'll show them where their spells can help. What, the weakest enemy? He could still ravenous flock this guy, so I don't really want to try and put any stances on him. Okay. That proves to me that he definitely has ravenous flock. Making some bigger units here. Alright, let's see what happens. Let's see if we can get through with this guy. Can the big boar get there? This guy sure is taking his time though with his plays. Bandle tree deck, right? So like is he gonna he has to try and play something just more than three power? Okay, many more fair. Then he plays a unit. I mean, this is still lethal, right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, yeah, it's still lethal if he doesn't play something. I assume he has a ravenous flock on this guy. He's got two of them. Okay. Oh, score strength. Okay. So we're doing seven damage, and then he's killing one of our units with a rock ball path. Which is a bit rough, I'm not gonna lie. But we can play this guy, he'll draw me a Yeti. And go with card advantage from there. Luck. Okay. Never mind, I guess. Well, not ours. We'll just lose him. We can grab another one of these guys. Actually, you just put another one of him on the board. Seems pretty good. Let's go! Grab my hat! Comb my mustache! Actually, I think we want to do this right now. I don't think we want him to discount anything and have the ability to play something right now. I want him to be down on units. Yeah, we got him! Finally! Woo. It was hard to get that win, boys. That one was tough.